Right, we are back once again. Now, I do want to mention that I did hit Control S after the end of the last video, so I have saved. Please make sure you're saving on your end. The next thing we need to do is to play test our level, uh, get an idea of, it, of how it feels early on. And before we can test, we need some sort of a means to get a player into the level. We need a controller. Now, we've already loaded in the asset that we need to make that happen. So if you come under your standard assets folder here inside your project view, you can expand that and you'll see an area labeled character controllers. I want you to expand that as well. Now we have two different types of controller that we can bring in. We have a first person controller and a third person controller. What I'm going to do is navigate my view up here. So I'm going to hold down alt once again and drag the left mouse button around use the middle mouse button and I'm gonna zoom myself in with the right mouse button right in here to this little flat area I'm gonna take the first person controller and drag it from the standard assets folder right here into the middle of this flattened out zone now this is already kinda of sticking halfway through the floor which is not good if I hit the F key to zoom in on it we can actually see that that capsule kind of denotes where the character being us will never actually see that capsule where that's actually placed now we need to move that up a little higher to do that I'm going to hit the W key and what that's gonna do not shift W like we were using on the train just just W and that's gonna bring up the move gizmo and I'm just gonna drag the up and down arrow which by default is green so if I just kinda of select that you see it's green all kinda of by itself and I'll drag that straight up. Now you just saw me do something on the left hand side of the screen which might be a little bit confusing. I made sure that here in the hierarchy panel on the left side of your screen I had the first person controller selected not anything that is underneath it. You, you'll notice that first person controller can be expanded with a little triangle on the left hand side and there are some things inside of it. There's the graphics which is actually this capsule itself that can be moved independently and I'm going to undo that and there's the camera as well. We don't want to move those. We want to actually move the controller. So grab the topmost level, the actual label, first person controller, and move that up so that that capsule sits up above the ground. Now, if we were to hit play, we can actually see our level. So let's, go, let's just give it a try. We'll go ahead and just tap play. But there are some problems, some that are obvious and some that maybe are a little more subtle. The first obvious problem is that we can't really see anything. We get a nice designation for the horizon line, kind of mm -hmm. the skyline of our level, but we can't actually see any of the features of our terrain. Why is that, Lee? We have no lights. That's right. We have no lights. So I'm going to stop everything once again. We get another problem as well, and that's only apparent because there is an error line at the bottom of the user interface, and that's telling us that there are two audio listeners in the scene, and it wants us to make sure that there's only one at any given time. The reason for that is that we have two main cameras. Now, a camera is how you see your world. That's how the player actually gets info about what the world looks like. And we have the one that was here by default. It's always there when you create a new level or a new scene. And we have the one that came in with the first person controller. We want to keep the one that came in with the first person controller. If we select main camera, either one of them, it doesn't really matter. And we take a look here inside the inspector panel on the right hand side, you'll see that at the very bottom we have an audio listener component. If we select the other main camera as well, you'll see that they both have audio listeners, hence the trouble. Now, if we if we absolutely had to have both of these cameras for some reason, and there are games where you will be using multiple cameras, we'll even talk about a multi-camera setup when we get to the camera videos, you still want to make sure that you only have one audio listener. What I'm going to do, though, is take this original main camera that came in with our level, and just hit delete and nuke it out. We don't need it, we only need the one that's attached to our controller. So that's gonna take care of this problem the next time we hit play. We'll no longer see that error. The other problem is the fact that we have no light. Now to create a light, there's, well there's a few ways to create a light. The way we're gonna do it is go under the game object menu, come down to create other, and we're gonna create a directional light. Now a directional light is a light source that is infinitely large and infinitely far away. Uh, kind of like the light of a sun, or it's, it's good at simulating the light of something like the sun. Now it comes in and it's already pointing uh, down the z-axis, which is off to our left. We need to rotate that up into the air. So I'm going to hit the E key, and that's going to bring up our rotation gizmo. We started off by using the W key, which brought up our move gizmo. So E is going to grab our rotation gizmo, 
and you can rotate around X, which is the red circle, or I mean, you can just grab and drag anywhere on this gizmo and rotate it down. You'll, you'll find that it's actually pretty intuitive. I'm not worried about specific rotations at this point. Uh, this is going to be kind of a work light. Now, later on, we can turn it into the sun. We can keep it, make some tweaks to it, and use it later as our sunlight. And I'm actually using finger quotes when I say sunlight. But for now, I just want you to think of it as a general work light so that we can see what it is we're working on. So now we have a light, we have our first person controller, let's click play, and to do this I'm going to click, once again, the play button up at the top of the screen. I might not have actually said that earlier, in fact I'm, I'm sure I didn't uh, when we played the level the first time, but that's okay because it didn't really work anyway. I'm clicking the play button up in the, the center of the interface, up near the top, and boom, we can now see what's going on in our world. We can also move around. Now the controls for moving around are just like the controls on most modern PC first-person shooters. So if you're used to those, you already know how to get around. If you don't, and you've never seen this kind of thing before, it's pretty simple. The mouse, just moving it around without dragging any, uh, any of the buttons, you're just moving the mouse around, is going to help you look, which is what I'm doing here. We can also hit the W key, and that will push us forward. We can hit the A key, and we slide to the left. We can hit the D key, and we slide to the right and we can hit the S key and go backwards. So once again, that's W for forward, A for left, D for right, and S for back. And between that and actually looking around the level, we can go in pretty much any direction we'd want to. So this is the flattened out area for our campground. And something has become really apparent here, and that is that our scale is just tremendous. This is a lot bigger than I really anticipated this campground actually being. And then we've got our pathway, which really dips down pretty low. And because it's so dramatically deep, we're probably going to run into some snags while we try to climb out of it. Like there, you, kind of, you can kind of feel, I don't know if you can see it very well in the video, but there's a little bit of a snag because it's really pushing down into some very, uh, very sharp edges around the edges of the little ravine there. And the extra polygons are snagging our character, and we don't want that. So we're going to end up smoothing that out. But let's go ahead and climb back up out. And we'll start off by going off to the left. Now, things are really bright. I mean, we're in danger of going snow blind here, and I, I realize that. But we can still kind of make out our path, which will be a lot more apparent once we get to texturing. And we get up here to the landing area where we're going to have our mine. And we can turn around. There's kind of a ravine off to the left here, which we don't really want to go into. And we can come all the way. Again, it's, it's a lot of white on white uh, right now. Now, we could turn down the brightness. Matter, matter of fact, I can point this out to you. You can still make changes to the objects in your game, even while you are playing it. Just please remember this. <laughs> get a note. In fact, get something sticky and put this on your wall directly above your monitor in great big red letters. Anything you change while the game is playing, or any settings that you change on the properties of your objects, will not be maintained when you stop. There are some things you can actually do while playback. We can, for instance, we can paint on our terrain, and we can raise and lower areas, and those will be maintained. But if we come over here into the inspector and start changing numbers on things, those numbers will change back as soon as we're done playing. So just resign yourself to it. You will do it. It's yeah. inevitable. You, yeah, at, at some point, you will, you'll forget that you're playing, and you'll make some sort of really long and involved tweak to your level, and then you'll eventually stop playing, and you will lose it all. It's going to happen. It's just it's a question of when, really. Now, what I'm going to do is come over here to my light. You'll notice I still have my light selected. And even if you didn't, you have the directional light here inside your hierarchy panel on the lower left-hand corner of your screen. You can always just click on that, even though the game is playing. You don't have to worry about the fact that you know, we're actually looking around the level and doing things, feel free to just come over here and click on it to select it. In your inspector, we have the intensity slider currently set to 0.5. It's uh, you know, about, I don't know, three two-fifths of the way down your screen. You can see my cursor here on it. We can drag this off to the left and start to kind of dim out the level a little bit. So we've cut it in half of where it was. It was at 0.5, and now it's right around 0.25 rounding. Now, if we click back here inside our view, we go back to navigating our view. And now we're no longer going snow blind. That's a lot easier to see what's going on. So now if we come around in the other direction, so 
There's something else you can do too, What's just that? for te- for testing purposes. Mm-hmm. We'll get into this explanation a little bit later on what these are, but you can turn your shadows on to define your um, shapes a little bit more. That's true. Now we've got kind of a steep dip down here, but it's not bad. I mean, it's traveling pretty nicely. And then we get over here to our hot spring, which is also quite a bit larger than I had originally intended. So, I mean, it it really is kind of more of a hot pond. (laughs) So we'll end up shrinking this down. Now, there's a couple of different approaches we could take to shrinking this. We could bring the terrain up around it, or later on, once we get to the decorating point, we could add things like rocks and boulders to really make that feel a bit more constrained. Now, I do want to throw this out there, and this is something just, you may not understand it when I say it, which is fine. Take it and kind of as red, and then uh, it'll make more sense later on once we get into decorating our terrain. The rocks that we place down, that we actually paint around our terrain, will not automatically block the player. Uh, if, they'd be able, if they wanted to, they could just walk up and just pass right through them as if they were made of nothing. But I don't want you to worry about that right now. For this demonstration, we're primarily focused on kind of the overall look of everything and not taking care of every single possibility where a player could break it. This is more of a, a kind of a tech demo of how to create levels in Unity in, in the more generic sense. So we have identified some problem areas. Our hot spring is a little too big. Our campground is a little too big. Uh, our little trail here, this, is, this part of it is really not bad. I can, I can work with this. Um, but we could you know, tighten a few things up. The little heavy ravine that we have here leading to our campground could really be, uh, be brought up. So now that we've identified that, we can make these changes, which is something that we're going to be taking care of in the next video. Lee, did you have anything else you want to throw out there? The one thing is with the controllers, mm-hmm. I don't want anybody to think that because Unity ships with this third-person controller or this first-person controller, that you're limited to using what is provided by Unity. That's true. They are a very simple um, controller system that Unity's provided with their product to get you started. So you can quickly get in and start creating levels. They are by no means what you would want to use as your final controller for a game that you were getting ready to sell. I'm really glad you pointed that out. Now, uh, in this series, because we're not trying to, to lean really at all on the scripting world, though, I mean, we may see a little bit of it before, before we're all done, but we're trying to avoid the whole scripting world. We're using the things that come along with Unity, but don't think that they are what you have to use. As a matter of fact, in the upcoming MMO class, we'll be creating our very own custom controller all the way from the ground up mm-hmm. uh, to allow you to control a third-person character as you would in a typical MMO environment. So with that, I think I've got everything that I wanted to get across here, which is just some play testing. I do want to point this out before we go. As soon as I stop, our lights are going to get bright again. And again, that's just kind of driving home the point that we changed the intensity of that light while we were playing the map. So as soon as we were done playing, that setting went right back to where it was. So now that we're not playing, we can come in here, set this to 0.25, which is where we uh, we felt it, it felt nice for the work purposes. And there we go. So now it'll be at 0.25 when we play from now on. But that is going to wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot.